Okay, so hi again. I'm uh, Hugo from Ostlandia. We are a small um, French company um, oriented toward GIS open source. I'm going to present uh, Tempus, which is a framework for multimodal uh, tree planning. Um, the context of this project, uh, so it's a platform for multimodal route planning. That means uh, we are interested in lots of uh, uh, transport, transport modes and with multi-criteria and multi-objectives queries. That's a collaboration uh, with the research labs, uh, mainly uh, IFSTAR and CRMA in, in, in France. And the main objectives are, the first one is extensibility of the framework so that we can um, address lots of different uh, scenarios and also performances. And the, the targeted use cases are, we want to be able to uh, develop new route planning algorithms. So it's more uh, research uh, oriented uh, developments and uh, have a, a, a common framework to test them and to benchmark them. And also we'd like to have some production scale multimodal route planner. Uh, it's a pretty young project. Uh, the first open source release uh, dates from uh, the last uh, month of May in 2014. Um, and I'd be mainly, mostly the, the only one uh, working on that. Uh, so I'm gonna give you an overview of the, the current architecture of the project of Tempus. So it, uh, we have um, a, C a core of, uh, of the, the project in, in C++ that is responsible of uh, holding in memory the graph and uh, can expose its API to a certain amount of plugins. Uh, so each root algorithm is uh, implemented in a, in a plugin and uh, it's also uh, a server that is that use that uses the WPS protocol to communicate with uh, external applications. We um, all the data come from uh, a database, uh, a PostGIS database with a, a, a particular schema. So in the in the database you have roads and all the transport portals, um, and. In addition to that, uh, Tempus is shipped with a, with a data loader, which, which is made in, in Python and SQL. So you can load uh, external data sources, of course, from OpenStreetMap, and uh, also for the public transport part, from GTFS uh, feeds, or from other um, uh, kind of data sources. And on the other end, on the other end, sorry, um, you can have client, we, we have client application that can uh, request the core and the main uh, is a, um, a QGIS plugin that has been developed uh, specifically for Tempus and we also have a Python API that can be used to, uh, to write batch scripts or benchmarking scripts uh, to, um, to test algorithms. So I'm gonna detail, uh, I'm gonna detail a little bit uh, those components. So the, temp the Tempus core um, stores all the, the graph in memory. It's, um, it's written in C++, it uses boost graph, um, and all the graph is loaded from a PostGIS database. It's able to answer the WPS requests, and it's multi-threaded, so you can uh, answer uh, requests in parallel. And uh, it's, it's designed to be uh, as lightweight as possible. But we have a particular graph data model uh, that we call multimodal graph. It means um, um, the, 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 the root of the model is the road network. And on this road network, you can uh, connect other graphs, um, namely the, the, the graph, the public transport graphs. And you can also connect point of points of interest like parkings, shared bike stations, shared car station, and so on. And you link all the layers um, on the road edges. So that's a layered view of uh, the different graphs. And you can also enable or disable, for instance, some uh, public transport graph for a particular application if you want. 
And with this particular model, we have, um, so we, we, we needed to, to, to design uh, uh, a special adjacency, uh, or special adjac adjacency rules, because we have a, some kind of a meta graph on top of the other graphs, on top of the road graph and the, the, the public transport graphs. And it's seen as a boost graph, so it respects the, the, the C++ concept of this graph. Each node is, is, uh, is a node of the, the underlying uh, graphs, but for edges it's a little bit different. So we have uh, speci special rules. So uh, sorry for my uh, lack of uh, artistic uh, uh, <laughs> skills, but uh, so we have here um, a very schematic representation of, um, so we have uh, two road nodes, uh, two uh, public transport uh, nodes that, that are attached to a road edge and a POI um, that is also attached to a, to a road edge. So we have different kind of uh, adju adjacencies. So, so this one is uh, from, from, a road so from a road node to a road node. We have a uh, road to POI, POI to road, road to, to public transport station, and uh, public transport station to road, and public transport to public tran transport. So that we can see all the nodes in one, one overall graph with this particular uh, adjacency <coughs> rules. So this was the core, and with that we are able to design plugins and routing plugins. And of, uh, apart from the sample plugins that are the, uh, shipped with, uh, with Tempus, we have, um, um, no, sorry. So each, uh, each C++ plugin uh, is, um, is, de is declared as, um, as loadable modules. So it works now uh, under Linux and Windows as uh, .so or .dll. And so it's, it's really basic for each plugin that can be, they, are, they can be requested by the user and they receive the global graph in input, and they must produce some um, a certain amount of roadmaps. Maybe it's one roadmap, but if because we we want to be able to answer multi-objective um, uh, problems, you can also plugins can also produce more than one roadmap, and it allows to easily experiment new features. So uh, the idea is to to keep the core simple, and when the plugins become too complicated. We try to uh, port features from plugins to the to the core. And the main uh, current active plugin. So it's uh, in terms of algorithm, it's pretty simple. It's a, it's a, a star. But we 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 focused on on multimodal things. Uh, so for instance, we are already able to uh, mix different uh, transport modes. Like you want to uh, be walking, use public transport, and also use shared bikes and shared cars if you if you like, and also uh, 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 be aware of parkings. Uh, for instance, if you want to go from point A to point B with your car, but you want to sh to park your car before arriving at uh, at destination. Uh, we also are able to uh, handle uh, turn restrictions and uh, more recently daily uh, speed profiles. Uh, so um, if, if you have some traffic data on some road edges, we can, it can be uh, taken into account. So for turn restrictions, um, this is a very generic um <coughs> concept that is um, in place. Um, and it's able to take into account uh, possibly complex turn res restrictions. Um, so, for instance, uh, you have this, uh, you cannot do a U-turn here, but uh, the U-turn is, is not just uh, two, two segments, you have to pass through some different road edges. And uh, it's, a, it's a very generic um, uh, way of dealing with that. It uses uh, in internal an automaton, a state machine, for each uh, restriction. About speed profiles, uh, so uh, if you have data, you, you can model um, daily speed profiles on, on, a, on some um, road edges, and the, the engine will take, in will, will take them into account. So if you know that, uh, I don't know, for lunchtime, this part of the road is uh, very dense, you can, you can uh, use, use this information. 
a few words about the, this uh, Python script that used to um, load data into the PostGIS database. <coughs> database. So, for so we have different uh, uh, loaders, of course, for the OpenStreetMap uh, case, and also for other proprietary uh, formats, uh, NavTech or TomTom, and Multinet. Um, we are also able to load elevation data from uh, SRTM or uh, BDLT, which is typically French. Anyway, uh, for, for the public transport offers, of course, uh, we are able to, to deal with uh, GTFS uh, uh, standards. And for the POI, uh, there is no real standard for POI, so we, we use uh, basic shapefiles with, with, with a small language, language between quotes, uh, where we can uh, extract data from, from shape files. And in development, uh, so there is these things from the IGN in France, uh, uh, so for the French road network, and also for public transport, this is also some something French, I think. But anyway, we'd so we are, we are developing this currently. So just to give you an overview of uh, the, the, the loading process, so we have this load tempus Python script, and then you you type the your input. So for instance, here, uh, suppose I have a shapefile export of of one uh, OpenStreetMap area here uh, around the city of Nantes in France. Uh, I say, okay, uh, I want to load with the type uh, OpenStreetMap. My data are located here, and I give the uh, the connection the connection string to the PostGIS database, and that's it. And if you want to use native uh, PBF file of for, um, of OpenStreetMap, that's uh, still possible, but you need a little bit of processing through Osmosis to to convert it to XML, and then we 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 provide a small script, a small executable that will uh, translate this, uh, this XML to shapefile and then the shapefile will be intruded, loaded into, into PostGIS. It will uh, import turn restrictions that are declared in, in OpenStreetMap. So there are a few of them, but it will use them. And it, it will also handle uh, topology processing. Um, I don't know if you know, but uh, um, OpenStreetMap uh, is the data that you, you found in OpenStreetMap are not directly usable for routing. You have to do a little bit of post-processing. So for instance, you can have two, diff two, two roads that cross each other. So visually they, they cross, but, um, but uh, you don't have a, a, a node uh, on the cross point. So it's not okay for a, for a graph or routing graph. So you have to, to, to split. Sometimes you have to split roads. But you have to be uh, to take um, uh, to be aware of some uh, special cases where the two the two roads are really not crossing be because, for, uh, for instance, you could have a tunnel or a bridge, so you don't want to split. So it it handles this for you. Okay, just an overview of POI import. Uh, so from a shape file, and the, the only thing to note uh, is that you can. Uh, use a, s a small filter uh, predicate here. So uh, from this shape file, I only want to extract uh, data with the, with the column type, which equals 1, 0, 0, 3, 0, 1, and, and so on. Okay, the last one of the last components, the, the WPS server. So for those who don't know, uh, WPS stands for Web Processing Standard. Uh, it's it's from the OGC, and it's basically um, an XML-based RPC remote procedure call, procedure call. Um, It uses fast CGI and it's multi-threaded, so you can uh, it can process uh, requests in parallel, and it's based on XML. So in input you get the the user request, and you you have to to pub to to answers with uh, to answer with, with roadmaps as well in XML. Okay, so now about clients. So we have a Python client on top of the WPS client. And mm, from that, we build a ded dedicated QGIS plugin. It also uh, serves uh, for unit tests and for uh, batch scripts. So let me give you some um, uh, inside of the 
the QGIS plugin. So okay, this is QGIS. Um, Okay, this is the, the Tempus plugin here. Uh, uh, so the different tabs here, the different screens will help me to connect to the server and uh, do my request and get the result back. And I also have some uh, fancy uh, tools here where I can load directly, load data straight from the PostGIS database and it will also uh, um, style it so you can see, so you can debug so you can have a, a, a good visual feedback when you when you debug your, your algorithm. Then here I'm, I connect to the to my WPS server and and I have the list of available uh, plugins. So here I'm going to use the dynamic multi plugin, and everything here below are options that are declared by the plugin. So I, every plugin developer can add its own uh, set of options and it will be uh, automatically automatically generated here and then this is my query uh, tab so I have uh, I can have lots of uh, destinations uh, lots of uh, criteria and uh, lots of transport modes I can use so I'm gonna start with uh, something from point a to point B with a, I don't remember, with a private car, I think, yes. So yeah, I'm allowed to, to go by walk and to use my private car, but um, I, would I would have to park the car before arriving. When it's, when it's been computed, then I have uh, I don't know if it's really clear, but on the map, you can see the results here in different colors. Each color is a different transport mode. And then you have the resulting roadmap that you can uh, display here. And you can, uh, you can select a subpart of the, of the roadmap. And here, th there is a mode change. So this is my private car, and then I have to park my car before I go to my final destination. And because I have elevation data in my in my database, and can I can also, if I want, uh, display them. Another query, I think. Um, yeah. So I I enable the the option where I want my private vehicle at destination, and then it will be a little bit different. Okay. So now I'm just using my private car with another roadmap. Example with uh, shared bikes. So I have layers that uh, allows me to um, display where are located uh, bike sharing uh, stations. Shared stations. Uh, so here, Okay, here is the result. So I'm uh, here. Uh, in pink, this is uh, my my bike, and in red, this is uh, me uh, um, walking. So I'm I take a bike here, go by bike, and then uh, drop the bike. Okay so on and then of course when you're you're biking the, the elevation uh, profile is important interesting just uh, just to illustrate the turn restriction so as well I can I can uh, load a layer that uh, represents uh, turn restriction here in gray so basically that's a u-turn restriction and I, I want to go by car from, uh, well, I want to do a U-turn, to make a U-turn. And uh, then it, it will find a way around, okay. And 
the last one with public transports. So here is, is only trams and not. And of course, because it's a public transport query, I have to, to specify a time of departure. Here are here's the results. Um, okay. Here's the roadmap. Okay. And uh, something that has been added recently. I'm going to skip a little bit. Yeah. So it's been um, added recently is um, the ability to reverse the graph so that we can solve uh, queries like uh, I want to uh, arrive before a certain time. So it's like you want to go after but with the graph reversed so now you can say i want to arrive before this uh, time and it will give you the, the answer so yeah well it's been arriving before and that's ah yeah and something uh, the last feature of that is illustrated in this video sorry Yeah, so th that's the ability to produce a trace. So um, the algorithm can, uh, uh, in addition to the to the roadmap, they can also uh, send um, part of the graph that has been uh, traversed. So here, it's uh, with the, the the standard algorithm with the dextra. And now I can I can I can compare with the the A star result algorithm. So I'm going to enable this uh, option and tune it. And I I have another trace which is smaller because I'm using an, uh, a heuristic for that. And then I can I can compare the two uh, the two traces. That's very useful when you develop uh, routing algorithm. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, uh, just a few words about performances. Um, okay. Just to let you know, we, well, we know we are s we s there are still rooms for optimization in the multimodal case, but uh, uh, at the same time, it's a hard case. Uh, but we have pretty good results with uh, 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 with this uh, first test. Um, one <laughs> good question: Does it does it scale? In terms of memory, we are uh, originally working with uh, small uh, French regions where, where, where everything works uh, okay, and we are working on on, the on some uh, uh, some bigger um, scale, like uh, uh, the scale of the size of a country of or Europe on or more. And in terms of CPU, because we are using a multi-threaded uh, uh, server it scales more or less li linearly, which is pretty good. And now for the future, uh, we would like to integrate more algorithms, like uh, for uh, pure public transport uh, queries, uh, Raptor or another one which, which is uh, named Connection Scan. For the road uh, case, uh, the hierarchical uh, road network, and especially is the one called Construction Hierarchies. Uh, but we all already know that it's hard to adapt to the dynamic nature of uh, the multimodal, uh, multimodal problem. We would like to integrate new data, like for instance, uh, uh, roads that are uh, preferred by bikes or for, for a certain uh, transport mode. Um, get uh, accessibility data uh, and, and use them. And uh, integrate new transport modes like uh, electrical vehicles, uh, where you have to uh, deal with charge, discharge, uh, station, and so on. And new optimization criteria, uh, the, simples, the simplest path, uh, the most comfortable one, uh, uh, and the with, with the minimal cost. We don't have anything related to, to fare zone so far. And of course, uh, integrate uh, multi-objective optimization. And in the end, that's the, the goal. 
And uh, okay, that's it. So if you want, the, the, pr the project is published, is uh, uh, on this uh, GitHub uh, repository. <laughs> so if you want to have a look and contribute, you're welcome. Uh, thank you.